Hello Final Fantasy fans and welcome back to another deck spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about the Mono Ice deck that we've dubbed Diamond Dust because it features the new Shiva from Opus 4 and it's something that we haven't quite talked about in a while and Ice has gained quite a few new tricks that it hasn't had previously. So of course, as we all know, Ice is focused around dulling your opponents forwards, freezing them, and getting in through points of damage. What Ice hasn't really been known for previously is forcing your opponent to think about what they're attacking with because they either have to pay costs associated with it or they have to worry about losing it to, say, a well-timed Shiva or Sid Reigns and Sage package. But all of that we will get into in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about the forwards. Up first we have Snow, and boy did this card get a lot better with this set. We of course saw that we are playing a total of 8 Shivas, and all of them are great to combo with this card. Snow himself is a little underwhelming with his power, but you should never be worried about your opponent having a blocker when you're attacking with him anyways. When he attacks he gets to dull something, and if you've played a Shiva, you get to freeze the same target. So, with the new Shiva we can kill something, dull and freeze another. With the uh, Shiva before that, we can dull three things in a turn. And then, of course, we have the three-drop Shiva that was the original combo where you get to dull and freeze two things in a turn. So Snow is doing a lot of work for us in this deck. And, well, it makes sense, sense of his connection to Shiva. But he is certainly not the only one that is dulling and freezing our opponent's characters. We have Kuja. You get to pay one of anything to dull something or pay an ice to freeze it when he attacks. Now, the question that we always see pop up, yes, it does get around Dark Emperor since it is yet another card that people are playing a lot more of lately, so please keep that in mind. Kuja in this deck gets bumped up to a 3-drop 8k, which is a perfect spot to be him in this deck because we do have the plus 1,000 power backup, so he gets to be aggressive and you don't have to worry too often about what your opponent might have. And of course, if they play something big and scary, Genesis comes up right behind Kuja and gives him the chance to get in for a point of damage because Genesis is going to freeze something and then be a threat to when he connects, your opponent has to discard. So with these three cards really being the centerpiece and having quite a few other cards that we're going to talk about that can dull and or freeze our opponent's stuff, it's very quickly we can see this theme that for Ice has continued on since Opus 1. Within that, though, we have gained a few more tricks, and this deck does focus a little bit more on the damage-dealing aspects than we've seen previously. So, of course, with that, we have Sid Reigns. This is a card that's been interesting in that it's been in and out of some lists. Some people played in Fire Ice, where you get to obviously have more ping effects and get more value out of it that way. But in Mono Ice decks, it's been a little bit difficult. You're either playing it as a finisher or your opponent had a lot of Brave. Uh, forwards that were difficult to interact with but now we finally have more tools to deal with this and we have some backups which I'll talk about later that play a key role and just give us that extra insurance that if we're playing it or this Terra the new light Terra as you'll see, talk about in a second here there's many more ways that we can get the last points of damage in and force our opponent to discard as well so a very you know attrition based style of deck that we're finally starting to see out of ice the Opus 1 Ping Terra makes an appearance here as well with Magic Charge. And what's great about this is, yes, we've had another Terra that we could use previously um, to make this special work. But now we have two Terras that are both great for what they want to be doing. And they can discard themselves for either version. So it doesn't matter which one's stuck in the field. You get to do the double effects or search for a summon and deal 6,000, which are can both very strong effects. So, of course, the four drop Terra, as I mentioned, you're going to dull two things, uh, effectively discard another copy of Terra, and deal 8,000 to two of your opponent's forwards that are dull. And, again, we have many ways to make them dull, and 8,000 is a significant amount of damage at the end of the day. This is often going to kill, you know, two parts of an al -Sid combo that your opponent just put in play against you, so you can finally, you know, catch back up that way. And then the new Terra. This is one that, it's Final Fantasy VI, everybody loves Terra. You know, the artwork, if uh is a lot of you either love it or hate it we of course love it and it's just a solid effect now it is difficult because you're either playing you know a dark emperor focused deck or maybe there's a couple shadow lord decks which are picking up in popularity it's interesting but at the end of the day light and dark characters are very difficult to choose from in what what you want to be doing in your deck so you have to be very careful about the decisions you're making and which ones you're going to include. And of course, in this deck, we did include Light Terra because as I mentioned, it discards, but also for that S, the Riot Blade. 
to choose a Ford, deal at 6,000 damage, as we mentioned with either Sid Reigns or other effects. Getting it to deal at 6,000 damage is huge, but then search for a summon and add it to your hand. As we've mentioned previously with Snow, we have all these wonderful Shiva cards that we want to be using. As we'll talk about more as we get to them in a bit, the two, new two-drop Shiva basically says, you know, as the game goes on, your mid to late game, you've already played other costs of Shiva, it's going to increase the amount of damage it's doing. So this is a key play late game. If you have maybe that one Shiva left in your deck and they have just that one blocker you need to get rid of, um, or if they have two and the one's a 6k, you can ping off the other blocker, get your last uh, Shiva out of the deck or search for it, deal something like nine or 10,000 damage to their last forward, and then just swing through for those points of damage. So she is absolutely welcomed in this list going forward. Beyond that, we have some new some new cards and of course one old one, the form of Sarah. So Remedy is an interesting choice here. It is insanely awkward in the Ice Mirror if your opponent is playing Renoa and Devout. So that's something to keep in mind, but it is kind of that it boosts Sid, which is nice, but not, you know, not as necessary. But it does give you that insurance against things like uh, Devout from Fire Ice, or if they have a Golbez and something like that, it just says they can't break it. So it's a one of, include it in your deck. It's a it's a free buff to Sid, which you're absolutely going to be playing two to three of in every ice deck going forward. And in the matchups where it's good, it's going to be insane. Sarah playing her normal spot here, just a fine three drop, effectively 7k because of our ice backup attacker. Comes into play, your opponent discards a card. Just a fine card to be playing in ice. Discarding cards certainly is a, a fine spot to be in. Um, when we have things like Sid and we have all these other discard effects possible um, with Squall and Laguna package here we're going to talk about in a minute, there's a lot of ways to start to whittle our opponent's hand down and really start to hurt their resources and what they can and cannot do. And then lastly, Sid. This is a card that has been quite surprising in that your opponent doesn't want to have dull cards on the field. We've talked about you know, Sid, Terra, we're going to talk about Snow, that he can already dull and other things. Genesis is going to connect. We have a lot of threats or a lot of key cards that says, if you dull your stuff, I'm going to get the absolute max value out of it. And if we have the new backup that can freeze two forwards, which we'll talk about later, it's, it can be very scary for your opponent. And because we're in ice and we just need more cards that have that aggressive, uh, the ability to be aggressive, I should say. And in this deck, it can be up to a four drop 10k. That is absolutely where Ice wants to be. Moving on, we have Laguna and Squall. Not much needs to be said about this duo. They've been played since Opus 1. They're probably going to continue to see play as, you know, unless we get some insane Laguna-Squall combo that comes out where you might replace one with the other, but the package is simply too good for what it offers. Laguna, of course, being able to dull and freeze something as well and become just a very powerful forward. And then Squall playing the same role, but he gets the chance to make your opponent discard more cards. So with Devout, we always have the option to play Laguna, bring in Squall, get both their effects, and make our opponent discard a ton of cards where we've you know, previously spent our resources for the turn playing out what we want and can be a huge swing in the course of battle when you have these two 10Ks on the field that are very difficult to deal with. And then we go on to our summon package. So all of these Shiva, I've kind of hinted at previously, but... The new Shiva from Opus 4, I've ranted and raved about it in the Ice review. I'm still going to rant and rave about it. I think it's absolutely everything that Ice wanted in a cheap, efficient removal, which they were sorely lacking previously. And the two-drop Shiva from Opus 3 was already worth playing, so why not? So both these Shiva are absolutely great. The one that you know a lot of people either aren't sold on or you're playing just because you want to increase your Shiva count for the new two-drop version is the three drop Shiva from Opus One. So yes, that can be a bit of a flex spot, if you will. Love or hate it, it's it's really great though when you have it for the, the two drop Shiva to increase the damage, but it is uh, it can feel bad in certain matchups where you wish it was uh, any of the other Shivas in this case. But we can't run four copies, we can only run three, so that's why we're playing it as a two of in this list. And then a fun of Zolera, which is always going to be a great card in Ice. Personally, I'd love to see one more Zolera in here somewhere, even though it puts us very heavy on summons if we were to go up to, you know, the full 10 where Ice wants to be normally. But maybe you kind of Shiva, put a Zolera in there, and you're going to be fine. It's a card that is increasing in popularity, and rightfully so. I think it's very well positioned right now. And then we're going to move into our backups. 3 Jill, no surprise, it is still a staple, and we did finally get the Opus 1 reprint, so if you haven't already, 
talk to your LGS, call around, figure out where you can get those Final Fantasy 13 starters because someone is going to have them for you now. So absolutely pick up one of them when you can. The new Sage, which has been catching a lot of people off guard, and I think once more people start playing with it, they'll fall in love with it, but pay two, put in the break zone, choose up to two forwards, point controls, and freeze them. Again, we have the Shivas, we have Snows, we have different ways like Laguna, we have a bunch of different cards that force our opponent to either pay additional resources in the, in the sense of Sid, or they just can't do anything about it, and we're going to dull their guys, and then this is another insurance to make sure that they're frozen. I love how many great two drop backups ice has got so i think this is absolutely kind of where ice is going to flex the most is now which two drop backups do you play but i think sage absolutely earns its spot in this list for the type of deck that you want to be playing and is going to be very powerful once you get the, to resolve the effect even once and then two of scholar now this is going to be a more controversial pick if you will so we will understand if people love you know love it or hate it what have you but when we have things like Terra, we have things like the uh, Ping Sid, uh, you know, Sid Reigns, I guess I should clarify between those two. Um, sometimes you just really need that extra 2,000 damage to either get the effect or get the full utility out of it. So while it can be a little bit expensive to pull it off or you're putting a lot of resources into it, when you can do Riot Blade plus Scholar to remove an 8k um, powered 4 that your opponent has, you know, that's that's been very difficult for Ice previously. So that little extra damage goes the distance for us when we can either play the 4,000 or 6,000 pings associated with it. And of course, if you're in a pinch and for some reason they have, you know, they tighten it, or not tighten, but golem and give it a plus 2,000 after you're in response to your Shiva or something, you do have the option to just use Scholar for that last little bit of damage. For backups, it really becomes picky when you look at the different tutor options or search options that we have. We can either search for uh, two specific cards in the form of Mute being Randall or uh, Remedy, which is great because we can just put the one up in the deck, play one of Mute, and it's an EX first. We have the chance to find it off that. We have a Singleton Mog 13. We have a lot of 13 character cards. Uh, I should specify forward cards in this deck that makes it worth playing. And then the last one is the new Final Fantasy VI Forward Searcher. This one was a bit of an interesting pick. You know, it could be Renoa if you're not playing the Renoa backup, so you could play it um, to search up Squall and Laguna. If you want to keep this, you could do things like uh, Lock and include him in the deck and maybe go towards a more Final Fantasy VI focused. I really want to stress that with the way Ice is going and the different build options that it has, the searching backups that you include in your deck are ultimately going to help refine that decision. It always makes it easier to play those different categories or combos that you're trying to pull off. So please, if you feel free to change these three up, figure out which what works best for you, which combos you run want to run. If you want to go to a more Final Fantasy VI, you know, package, for example, then play two of the new the newest Sid, or I should just say Empire Sid. If you are thinking about maybe going into a Lightning Ice package where you want to have a very light Lightning Splash to play the new Lightning and to have Mog 13 too, then absolutely put up that up to two. You really need to play with it a little bit more and see which direction you want to take Ice to ultimately decide what number of backups that you want to be using. So again, please feel free to modify those to your liking. And then of course, just the staples for Mono Ice. Three Duke, three Devout. Duke is great because it gives plus 1,000 power to your normally underwhelming forwards power-wise, but now they finally kind of are lifting up to the, meet the standards with Opus 4. We saw quite a few very powerful forwards. And then Devout. There are so many great targets in this deck, but you know, namely you'll be bringing back either your Squall, Lagunas, or even Genesis in this case from the effect. But keep in mind that we only have three Devout, and you really want to save those plays for something that's either going to get you in a couple points of damage or win you the game. I think it's too easy to fall into a trap where you're playing Devout just to make your opponent discard some cards, or maybe you're getting a less optimal play if you were if you just wait a couple turns you can get in more points of damage that way so it is a, a little bit more difficult of a card to use properly but you know when you get to do things like bring genesis back and swing for three points of damage it's really hard to not see the value in the card and with that that is the mono ice list that we have for you today again we want to do things a little bit differently this week because we're heading to orlando and it's a little difficult and we also had a massive snowstorm come out this way so we couldn't get everyone to meet up for a dual series, so instead we're doing two deck spotlights. Hopefully tomorrow when Matt and I are back from Orlando, we're going to do some reports for Mognet and get back to our normal recording that way. But we'll probably have to do Wednesday and Friday videos then 
as well, just because it's going to be hard to record anything lower both in Orlando. So if you guys like this video, make sure to drop us a like down below. Comment what your favorite version of Mono Ice is going to be. Are you focusing more on Final Fantasy VI? Maybe you're focusing on Final Fantasy VIII. Let us know. We'd love to see your list as well. And of course, subscribe for future Final Fantasy trading card game content. So on behalf of myself and the rest of the Six Sages Gaming crew, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one. This video made possible thanks to our Patreon supporters. Thank you to our honorary sages.